Hello everyone and welcome to week 8 of the TBL. Your New York Empoleons have finally made it back over 500 on the back of a 4 game winning streak. Now this winning streak started the week after we last played the Suffolk Skuntanks who we will be playing this week for the second time this season. He is also 4-3 and three this season. His only loss is coming to the teams above us on the ranking list. So we've got, we've got some work cut out for us but... We have been putting in the work recently. I think we finally figured out how to make this team work at its most effective. We did make some changes right near the trade deadline, so you'll see those coming up as uh, as this team builder goes on. But first things first, Lieutenant the Tapu Lele coming back, Psychic Moonblast, Focus Blast, and Hidden Power Fire. I should probably go over his team, shouldn't I? He's going to have Tapu Koko, Toxapex, Como O, Porygon 2, Donphan, Arcanine, Miss Magius, Stoutland, Meganium, Zangoose, and Mega Scizor. Now his team, as we saw last time, really, really threatening. He also made a big change, and his team has changed a lot since last time. Um, but his big change being that he traded Nihiligo for Toxapex, so he no longer has that, which is the Pokemon that I didn't have an answer to last time. And this time I still kind of didn't, because I didn't need one. He doesn't have it anymore. Anyway, so uh, Lieutenant, Psychic, Moonblast, Focus Blast, and Hidden Power Fire. Holding that Vitinium Z, Max Special Attack, Modest Nature. Obviously the Vitinium Z is going to help with the Porygon 2. Uh, it's going to help with the Zangoose and the Stoutland, and generally just be a good move to click on almost anything except for that Miss Magius. Um, the two, uh, 244 speed allow me to outspeed a bunch of the threats in his team. His team is just such an interesting speed tiering system because while there are stuff up to 95 with Arcanine uh, that he's traded Blastoise, he got Arcanine, um, and Zangus is at 90, everything else is 80 or below unless it's above, you know, Tapu Lele. So we're going to outspeed everything base 80 or below. Um, and uh, do our best to outspeed that Como O as well at 85. So that is what we're going to be running with the Tapu Lele. Uh, next up we have Puff the Weezing, Black Sludge, uh, Toxic Spikes this week, Flamethrower Protect, and Clear Smog. I really wanted Weezing to be a Mega Scizor counter, but I really didn't have it. I didn't need it for almost anything else in his team. If he does go with the Toxic Specs, which would surprise me a lot, then Toxic Spikes get neutralized a little bit because to, uh, Toxic Spikes is a pretty safe switch in. Excuse me, but um, otherwise I think Toxic Spikes is really, really useful against his team to wear down things like the Donphan, the Stoutland, the, um, the Tapu Koko, the Como O, so they can't just set up and sweep. Um, additionally, having Toxic Spikes and Protect allows me to uh, click it pretty much any time. I didn't want to just run Toxic um, because I didn't think the things that he was going to necessarily switch in on the Weezing were going to be things that Toxic would be useful against. Uh, namely, the Toxapex is a huge Weezing stop, uh, just absolutely hard walls Weezing. Mega Scizor is something that I want the Weezing to switch in onto, um, and then set up a layer of Toxic Spikes as he switch is, switches into the Toxic Specs so that he can't get rid of them immediately and he has to have something get Toxic. Next up we have New York the Empoleon holding the Wakan Berry with Defiant as its ability. Aqua Jet, Knockoff, Earthquake, and Agility. Yes, I was debating between which dance. Do I want to go Agility? Do I want to go Swords Dance? I decided on Agility this week instead of the Swords Dance. Um, I think Swords Dance would have been very, very useful, but I was a little bit worried about the speed of this thing, and I kind of wanted to see if we can get that Agility up. With the 164 speed and, uh, and the neutral nature there, we are able to outspeed every single thing on his team um, if we can get an Agility up. So that is really, really valuable. Um, that hits 202, uh, which outspeeds the Taco Coco if it's not Scarfed. Um, Earthquake obviously does a lot of damage to that. Knockoff's going to be doing some very useful damage to Miss Magius, um, and otherwise just good utility. And uh, Aqua Jet there for priority if Tapu Lele hasn't set up its terrain. Now I could have also gone Liquidation with the agility. Um, there was a lot of choices here. Obviously Arcanine is an interesting reason to have Defiant. Um, but at the same time, I think this thing's going to be able to put in a lot of work. Well, Conberry allows me to take a hit from the Tapu Koko, so I can Earthquake um, and still survive an Electrolype attack and then Aqua Jet later, um, whatever, if I have an Agility. So this thing's going to be putting in a lot of work. It's Max Attack Adamant. We'll see how this goes. Um, next up, we have Gold. I can't believe I didn't realize that his eyes turn gold when you make it shiny until just now, but that's how good we know this team, guys. Anyway, Claydol holding the leftovers is going to be using Stealth Rock, Rapid Spin, Earth Power, and Shadow Ball. It's going to be uh, very, very defensive this week. Last week we ran max, max Special Attack Modest. This week we are running Max Special Defense, uh, Calm, and Max Defense. And the 4 in HP just for general bulk. Um, Earth Power, obviously really useful against the Tapu Coco, against the Toxapex, uh, hits the Arcanine. And Shadow Ball, very useful against the Miss Magius, because that would otherwise wall my Earth Power set. Um, 
and so those two moves really really helpful i was debating between the psychic coverage and the uh, the ground coverage but i decided to go with the ground coverage because i have psychic coverage on a couple other pokemon if you'll notice i'm bringing all of my psychic types this week i really don't see him bringing tox effects as a result of the fact that i have three psychic types but if he does bring it and it does wall my wheezing i have three psychic types that can handle it so hopefully it'll be okay to manage uh, but we do have our work cut out for us there. Speaking of which, welcome back to the New York Empoleon, Latias. Yes, Ina is back. She is back from Season 2. We traded Kiram Black for Latias uh, in Week 7. We didn't end up using Latias last week, but we had it. And it is going to be Choice Scarf, Psychic, Tailwind, Trick, and Ice Beam this week. Um, that set wrecks the majority of his team with the exception of Mega Scizor. Um, and that's totally okay if I can't handle Mega Scissor with this thing because I do have the Hidden Power Fire on my Tapu Lele, which can prevent the Bullet Punch. I have the fl Flamethrower on Weezing, which is my obvious switch into Mega Scissor, and then I do have one more Pokemon left over. Now we are max special attack, max speed with a Timid Nature, uh, not max speed, but a ton of speed with a Timid Nature allows us to outspeed Miss Magius, even if it's Scarfed. That was really important. Um, Psychic does not get the boost because I'm not on the ground for the Psychic Terrain. I thought it was if the other Pokemon was on the ground, it's if you're on the ground. Unfortunately, that's the case, but Psychic's still really, really powerful um, coming from a Latias with base 110 special attack. We know how much work this thing can do. Uh, tricking that Choice Scarf onto something like a Toxapex, something like a Porygon 2, something like a Dawn Fan, something like a... Uh, I mean, like, there's a million things on this team. Meganium that I don't mind being Scarfed. Um, so it seemed like a really good option for me to do. Additionally, it allows me to outspeed things like the Coco um, and do a lot of damage to, to Pokemon like that. Or Como O, even after a Dragon Dance, will still get outsped by this Latias. So we do have that as a, as a possibility. And finally, we did drop Mega Lopunny in favor of Mega Absol. Now, Mega Lopunny absolutely put in work. I was starting to figure out how to use her. I feel like this was a move that was more lateral than upwards. But I do really like Mega Absol as a Pokemon in League format, and I think people were trying to get very cute with me having Mega Lopunny. I think they were getting used to the way that I was running it, and I was starting to only run it the same way because I couldn't figure out another set that would work. So instead of running the same set every week, I figured let's get something that's equally valid um, in League format, but gives me a couple of different options. So first off, um, we are going to be running it this week mixed, because if you look, it actually has a higher base attack stat than Mega Lopunny, and a higher base special attack stat by a lot than Mega Lopunny. And its speed stat lower by 20 points, but that obviously isn't that big of a deal. If I'm exchanging uh, plus 14 attack and plus like 40 special attack for, four, for 20 points in speed, I'm totally okay with that. Now, we are going to be running 164 attack, 164 special attack, and 180 speed with a naive nature. Um, which allows us to run Flamethrower and guarantee an Oko on a, on a, mega, on a decently bulky Mega Scizor. Um, additionally, we have Knock Off, Play Rough, and Super Power, which should handle just about everything on his team, uh, except for the Toxapex. But again, the Toxapex, I have three Psychic types that should be able to handle that Toxapex, and if I can't do it, that's a problem. Uh, Play Rough is really just there for the Como O, really doesn't have to do anything else, uh, but I did have that spot left over. Super Power, obviously, Stoutland, Zangoose. Uh, Porygon 2, all don't love superpower, and then knockoff is stab, hits the Miss Magius, uh, hits, I mean the Porygon 2 doesn't love it, Donphan's not gonna love it, Arcanine's not gonna love it, so stab, knockoff, decided to go not Sucker Punch, um, it is interesting to use a Mega Absol alongside a Tapu Lele just because of the fact that there is that terrain to worry about, and Mega Absol definitely functions really well with the Sucker Punch, but I do think this week we are gonna get away without it, um, having that speed allows me to outspeed Miss Magius every time unless it's Scarfed, um, so I do have to watch out for a Scarf with Magius, and obviously I'm not going to outspeed a Coco because I don't outspeed a Coco anyway. But I would outspeed a Coco if he's running Modest. Now, that's the team we're running this week. We shall see how it goes. I think this is the right team to handle Wolf's sets. Um, not having Nihiligo really helped me adjust what I needed to adjust. I was pretty terrified of that. Um, we do have the Magic Bounce on Mega Absol, as well as the Rapid Spin on the Clay Doll, because I do want to set up my Rocks, I do want to set up my Toxic Spikes, and I don't want him to be able to to get rid of them. Now, he doesn't have Blastoise anymore as a spinner, but he still has Donphan. Uh, he still got Mega Scizor as a possible Defogger, etc. So, he does have options there, but I think that we'll be okay on this, uh, on that front, and be able to keep our stuff, our, our hazards on the field. Anyway, I will see you guys tomorrow with that battle. I hope you guys are excited. I'm excited. We are back over 500, and even if we lose this match, we're still at 500 for the season, and I was trying to get to 5-5 five and five by the end of the season when I was down 0-3, uh, so I think we're in good shape to do that. Hopefully you guys are having a great time with the TBL. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care, everybody.